Welcome to Chess Killer Tips, brought to you by ChessQueen.com. Here's your host, Alexandra Kostinyuk. Today I want to talk about the very difficult rook and bishop against rook endgame. I've encountered this endgame several times in my tournament practice. The latest time being in the final match of the tournament of Philandry against Grandmaster Laurent Frissinet. I won this game even though this endgame is theoretically drawn, if played perfectly. However, it's very difficult to hold in a tournament game, and there are a few positions that are won for the stronger side and you have to know about them. The most important one is the Philidor position. The position on the screen that you can see now is one for white. White wins by playing rook f8 check, rook e8, rook f7, rook e2. Rook e2 is the best defense. If black plays instead of rook e2 king c8, he loses after rook c7 check, king b8, rook b7 check, king c8, rook b4, rook d8 check, king c6, rook e8, rook a4, king b8, king b6, king c8, and here rook a8 check or bishop c6 wins. After rook e2, white has to wait by playing rook g7 in order to force black to move his rook from the second row where it's placed optimally. Black has to move its rook to the first or the third row. In both cases its mobility will be restricted. If the rook is on the third row, black cannot play rook f3 or rook b3. And if it's on the first row, it will also be not enough for a draw since white will be able to control the d1 square by playing bishop f3 later. The best move after rook g7 is rook e1. We will see rook e3 later. After rook e1, white plays rook a7. This continuation was proposed by Grigoryev, which makes the way to win easier than the original Philidor solution, which was rook b7. Rook c1 rook f7, rook e1. Black loses after king e8, rook f6, rook d1, rook f2, rook d4, after rook d3, white wins by playing rook g2, so rook d4, rook e2 check, and after king f8 or king d8, Rook g2 wins. So let's get back to rook e1. White plays bishop f3, rook e3, after king e8, white wins after rook f4, king d8, bishop h5, king c8, rook b4, and then bishop g4 check, and rook b8. So rook e3 bishop c6 threatening to play rook f8 black has to give check on d3 rook d3 check bishop d5 rook e3 this position could have occurred had black played rook e3 instead of rook e1 as i talked about earlier white wins here after rook d7 check king e8 rook a7 King f8, rook f7 check, king e8, rook f4, king d8, bishop e4, king e8, bishop c6 check, and then rook f8 check, and rook takes e8 checkmate. It's a very difficult endgame, so I suggest you'd practice this position against the computer or a friend. It will definitely pay out in your next games. Thanks for watching the Chess Killer Tips podcast. Send your questions and comments to Alexandra at Kostinyuk.com.